Thank you for joining us this afternoon for the July 18, 2023 Monasterio Special City Council meeting. Before the meeting is called to order, I would like to point a few house rules to assist council members, staff, and members of the public, uh, the public to successfully participate in this meeting. For today's meeting, Zoom is being used to allow public participation with the Special City Council meeting. For those using Zoom to participate, there are two icons, chat and raise hand. Please use chat only to report technical issues such as being unable to hear a council member speaking. Please use raise hand to be recognized by the mayor and be able to speak to the council. Only attendees using the Zoom application can use the raise hand option to comment. Participants calling in from a telephone will only be able to listen and cannot provide feedback or public comment. Lastly, when we're not all in the same room, all votes in the meeting must be taken by roll. Thank you. I would like to call the special meeting of City Council to order on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023 at 3.46 p.m. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Turner is absent. Council Member Craig? Here. Council Member Lahey? Present. Vice Mayor Wolsheimer? Present. And Mayor Megachuk? Present. Thank you. Uh, this is a special meeting. Um, and we're going to, we've got an item on the consent calendar, which is to approve the minutes of the July 11th, 2023 special city council meeting. Um, since there's only one item, I'm not going to ask if council wants to pull any items. Uh, but I'd like to have public comment on that. If you're here in chambers, please approach the podium. If you're appearing online, please raise your virtual hand. No hands are raised. No hands are raised. No one's approaching the podium. Uh, move to approve. We've got a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Four to zero one. With that, uh, we're going to move to new business, which is consider approval of the community center design as recommended by the community center committee. Do we have a staff report on that? Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Diana Perkins, the city's planner. And in January of this year, the city council formed the community center committee to develop and recommend design plans for the remodel and addition of the former post office building next to City Hall to repurpose the building as a community center. The committee has had several public meetings um, where input was provided from the committee members as well as from the public. Um, additionally, citywide notification um, of the community center project um, has been made through the two recruitments that were conducted for committee members, as well as a newsletter that was mailed to all Montessorino households earlier this month. Um, the plans attached to the staff report are the most recent plans that incorporate the committee member and community feedback that has been received. And the community center committee voted yesterday at their meeting to recommend that the city council approve these plans. So staff recommends that the city council consider approving the design plans for the community center remodel. That completes the staff report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, what I'd like to do is have council ask questions. After that, we'll take public comment. After that, we'll come back for a resolution or discussion and then a resolution if appropriate. Uh, with that, uh, do any of the council members have questions of staff? Mm -hmm. This one question. Are there, this one presented to council also about a month or two ago. Are there any significant changes uh, from that meeting? No, I don't believe there's any significant changes. Um, just just a second. The, I can't recall if the plans presented the city council in our joint meeting. Is that is yes. that what you're referring to? If it had one restroom or two, it had one. I think it, it had one. one. Okay, so this um, this has two. This has two. Okay. Good. Go ahead, Council Member Craig. So I would just like to find out the reasoning that we are not expanding the building all the way to this building. It seems like 
if we have an opportunity to do this now, this would be the time to do it. We're probably never going to get a crack at this and we're leaving some square footage on the floor here. Understood on that note. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Jacqueline Greenmeyer, and I um, represent uh, Colstat Associates. Um, we did have this discussion at a prior meeting. Um, we discussed the pros and cons of connecting the buildings. Um, one of the main pros of not connecting them is uh, structural integrity. Um, there is an addition happening and to the, that building over there. And it um, once you connect the two, then the whole building has to be seismically upgraded. And all of the walls and uh, will have to be, and any engineer you talk to would say that they would have to reanalyze the whole structure as a whole. That's one one reason. Number two, we felt like the the uses of the spaces were entirely different. That space um, not only is going to be used for city purposes, but it's also for the public. And we didn't feel that we wanted somebody at renting the space to maybe necessarily have access to this structure. And then. Um, I think that, and then aesthetically, I think we like the idea of having this visual separation and entry point between the two buildings. We have an arbor proposed for um, in between where you can walk through and sort of enter into the space from the sidewalk um, through the, you know, the butterfly garden and all that. So there were several reasons, but we did sort of go through this in, in past meetings. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I was just asked this question. I've been asked a couple of times. And yeah. I yeah. Didn't really have a specific reason, though. It, it would be analyzed not just structurally, but had to be analyzed for um, like the the occupancy. Um, there's a, several different ways it would have to be analyzed together, right. and that means work that would have to be done here, and we'd add more to the budget. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, we've got a with that, what I'd like to do is now open this for public comment. Uh, there's no one uh, here in chambers uh, from the public. And if you're appearing online, please raise your virtual hand. No hands are raised. No hands are raised. With that, I'll bring it back to council for any further discussion or a motion. Uh, it looks like you've done a great job with that thing here. Make a check has done a great job with leading this effort and making the subcommittee, I think, was a good idea so that the, the community has had a chance to get involved with it. The architects have done a good job. So I, I would move to approve the project. I move to approve the design. Right. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 401. With that, the next item is to is unfinished business. Consider expanding the number of public members on the committee center, community center committee by two and the responsibilities of the community center committee. Do we have a staff report on that and or does city attorney Powell wish to make comments on that? Would love to. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, my understanding is the community center committee was established with a, a variety of tasks that followed along with the phases of the project, and that ultimately you ended up with seven members. Um, one of the issues that has been discussed is whether or not you could use that committee to um, be a part or to assist with the capital campaign. And so one of the discussions for you today is, do you want to expand the membership of that committee by two people and add to them the responsibility of overseeing the capital campaign? Um, one option would be that once the committee, if, if you were to do this, the committee could create a subcommittee and that subcommittee would be an ad hoc subcommittee that would work on the capital campaign um, project. They could do their own research work, come back to the committee, make recommendations, and then that committee would make recommendations to the council. Um, the other item to discuss tonight, the idea would be that we would come back at the next meeting in August with a resolution that creating the committee, defining their tasks, 
and expanding the membership and if the council so wishes. Um, on the documentation that was included when the committee was originally created, it did also include the phase, the construction phase, um, and the some of the details that are typically more staff driven um, duties dealing with the bidding, um, the meeting with the prospective bidders, meeting with the contractors, um, and staff would, is proposing that that be removed from the scope of work for the committee. You have um, now your public, new public works director, as well as a project manager, Sarah Chapin, who will be coming on board um, in the next few weeks that seem ideally suited to take on those tasks, um, rather than doing it by committee, which could become somewhat cumbersome. So we're looking for feedback and then direction to come back with a resolution at the next meeting. I have a question having been involved in this process for a little while. Um, my question is, we've gone and solicited interest for applications from the public, and we have an application period for that. I'm not sure if it's eight days or 10 days or whatever it is, but could we have the city clerk provide direction to start that process so that when we come back on the 1st of August at a regular city council meeting, we can amend the charter and appoint applicants um, if they apply by then? Yeah, so you would have a two, at the next meeting, it would be a kind of a two-part item. So the one would be to consider the resolution that would potentially expand the membership. And if that were to pass, then you could have the interviews or whatever the process is for selecting the additional members. But you could direct the city clerk to start advertising for that possibility today. That to me sounds um, good. I, any other questions of council? Did, and I would like to take public comment on this, but um you're this is you're re requesting direction on this yes. not a, not a, a resolution other questions of council to uh city attorney powell no so just to be clear so right now we're just uh, uh, discussing whether two more members should be added to the committee or not and whether the committee should also do capital uh, campaigns and remove those duties from the committee that are typically more staff. So that would be meeting with the contractors, being involved in the bidding process, um, those types of responsibilities that you would normally assign to a, a staff person. Yeah, I think this committee involvement is more common. Is it the committee involvement discussing with architects and everything else? Um, would, would that be separate or? So, so we still going to be meeting with architects and looking at the design and stuff like that. Right. So the design, um, and I'm just looking for the paperwork. So it, can... um, perhaps it would help be helpful if the city clerk would put up the um, diagrams, the slides that show what the changes would be. You do a screenshot on that, please. There. Let's go. Quick question in the meantime. Yes. So, on our prior vote, where we said um, that we are approving the center design, is the design locked in now? The as would be with the site architectural commission. The the, the design is locked in, and so they can move. They the architectural team can move forward with applying for a building permit and all of the engineering can be completed and that's required um, but up here you see the different phases and i think that um, city attorney powell crossed out certain tasks that were considered in the in the charter before 
and funding has been added to the top there. Okay. If you go to the next slide, it talks about the discussion of the what would happen in the funding, and then it's added operation, which we're going to have to develop policies and that sort of thing. This is all for the next meeting, but it's to preview what you're probably going to see at that point in time. Okay. All right, so because I wasn't sure when you were saying construction, was that now, now that we've got the drawings, did the construction mean things like the color of the walls and are we going to put shelves in and the type of furniture and stuff like that? I mean, how, how far down were we were initially thinking that they were going to go on that, on those kind of decisions? So we have been contracted to do the preliminary design and that's what we put together for you guys. We are waiting for contract to construction to the construction documents, which would include all of the other subcontracts uh, with a structural engineer who would design all the structural framing. There would be an uh, MEP designing all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, and um, and on part of our contract would be to do finish selections as well. So there's quite a bit involved in all of that. Okay. And if I could just make this quick side note, lots of Ethernet ports, please. Lots. I'm sorry. Well, lots of Ethernet ports. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> For sure. And a nice central closet that we can put some nice AV equipment. We have that on the planes. Thank you. Can, can, can you go back on screen? I couldn't see from there. Sorry. Sorry, Steve. And what, what is the reason for this? Is this a issue with the, with the rule of could you just scroll down just a tiny bit so we can see the bottom of the stairs see that little x not required in the new city employees uh, but my, my fundamental question was whether this is a second take the point <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah my, my basic question was is, is this an issue on what the role of the city council should be and what the role of staff should be Partly, yes, yes. It's so um, the uh, attending the bidders meeting, responding to questions, um, dealing with the bidding process, reviewing construction drawings, all of those involve some specialty skills that you have professional staff to do that. And um, it would be it best practice would be to use your professional staff for those things. Also, I think when you're dealing with a committee of seven, maybe nine people, that's cumbersome and, and could take a lot of time. Yeah, that's the solution whether you want a committee to be that, that big or not, I suppose. I, it, if I may respond, I think that we're absolutely delighted to have Daryl Jordan join and also Sarah Chafin and join the staff and it's wonderful to have those resources so that they can take this and they can run with it and the committee will still meet this is for the for the community center committee and I think they will be involved but they won't have to they the committee won't be responsible for doing any of those things that have been crossed off but you would see, I think, under construction, if there are uh, proposed construction change orders, that may be something where uh, city engineer Jordan comes back and says, I think this is a change that the committee should know about and seek input on. And uh, testing the building during commissioning, that's like, you know, the committee could could basically use the ethernet ports <laughs> they could test everything it's just you need people to do that so the committee could could do that but the other items are not required since we've got that expertise that that city attorney powell had just explained it sounds like the committee is comfortable with this change. yes yeah yeah, there, uh, that's, that's a very interesting discussion. There's in every construction, there will be changes, small changes, big changes. So I think we have to trust the city engineer to make a judgment call which changes require the input of the commission and which don't. So I'm, I think we should give the 
city engineer well to leeway in making that decision. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was going to concur with Council Member Avery. I've been on a an office redesign committee, and um, if there was a way to get that time back in my life, <laughs> I would probably live to be a hundred years old. Um, yeah, I, I just the minutia that was discussed at these things, and the and and the luckily. The uh, construction company said, look, for every day we go over, we're going to charge you like this ridiculous amount of money. And that's what finally got decisions made. And and I, I just worry about, you know, expanding the committee. Now, when you went to the second page, it seemed like the focus of the committee was going to be um, more heavily focused on, on fundraising and stuff like that. And especially if we're bringing in folks who have a really good black book and expertise and funding and and getting funds i'm all for that but um in terms of you know we've just hired uh, a a, um, a great city engineer we've got a great building staff and and uh if those decisions need to be made it should really be made by by staff but you know, when it comes to funding and doing all of the other ancillary efforts around the community center, I think the committee would be really good for that. Absolutely. I, I would like to to point out, and we can have this discussion at, at the subsequent meeting, on the operation side, there's a number of policies that are going to have to be considered. Um, how do you schedule events there? What are the usage fees? What are the rental requirements? What are the parking regulations? And I think that the committee can generate the have those discussions, the public comment, the input, the the dealing with alternatives, and then recommending as a recommending body the city council saying, you know, you still have to pass it, but they recommend these policies, which helps leverage city council. But city council is decision made by go ahead. Yeah, and I think that's a great idea. And one suggestion I would just put out to whoever passes this on to the committee, but the town of Los Gatos will allow organizations to use their chamber, for example. But you have to have police and cleanup and all of these other pieces around it that you're on the hook for. So, you know, I, I think that they might just have a, a, a pretty decent starting point for us to take uh, a look okay. at. So, because these are some of the things that we're going to have to factor in. We probably shouldn't just say, here's the key to the place, you know. <laughs> we'll uh, drop, drop them off on Monday morning and we'll see you later. Have, have a great event. Yes, yes so there's, there's a lot of other things we really have to be involved in general policy. Uh, expanding, we go from five to seven basically now, or from seven to nine. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. So you may want to, the additional capital uh, campaign members, you may want to limit their purpose to the campaign and not be part of the overall the committee itself so that you can, so it's more manageable. Otherwise, you know, nine people may be in the to manage all the time. And you may even have problems with getting formal at times. So I, I think that what I heard um, City Attorney, Attorney Powell saying was that the capital campaign could meet, so if you've got nine, a quorum is five, and three or four people could meet and, and not be a, have a Brown Act violation so that they can have discussions and 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 meet without a duly called meeting, and, but they would have to be part of an ad hoc committee that would be formed by themselves by the community center committee, and so they could form that that ad hoc committee. The committee itself is nine, so you're going to have more ad hoc meetings than regular meetings. I will drop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Those are it probably would depend on what's what the issue is. So what if it's the operations, if it's the time to start working on the operations, then you're gonna have more regular meetings. If it's 
during the project and leading up to um, the construction, you probably have the, the ad hoc committee may be meeting more frequently to try to get the fundraising off the ground. So it'll it'll depend. But all nine will be members of the full committee. So five of them would be needed for a whole meeting. Well, it's, it's kind of a work in progress, and we see how it goes, and if you have problems with it, then. Yeah, maybe we can reduce it and the tell the committee is uh, <coughs> but then it's your anyway, right? Yeah. All right. Can the uh, can the committee form a subcommittee or does that have to be approved by city council? We'll put it in the um, resolution that will allow them to do that so they can do it themselves. So we have discussed the kind of mixing the two of these items, but I do want to open public comment on item number one, if we've asked questions, if we're satisfied, okay. Um, if you, there's no one from the public here in chambers, if you're appearing vir uh, remotely, please raise your virtual hand if you'd like to make a public comment. No hands are raised. No hands are raised. I will close public comment on uh, adding two members and changing and amending the responsibilities. Does staff have uh, appropriate direction from city council? Yes. All right. With that, um, item two is again, kind of a mix of number one, but specifically I'd like to have public comment, open public comment if you're appearing uh, remotely, please raise your virtual hand on consider changing the charter of the community center committee. No hands, raised. no hands are raised. I will close public comment on that. And I believe that uh, you've got sufficient direction on that. You do. And then item, so we're, we're done items one and two. Now we'd like to talk about Item number three, consider authorizing the mayor to invite elected local, state, and federal officials of Monte Serino to the annual picnic. And um, I will put forth uh, that my, my views before we have a, uh, I don't know, a staff report on this. Do we want to have a, do you have a staff report? Do you want to explain what? What it is, or would you like me to explain? Go ahead. Um, I believe that it's very important. Because let me say it differently. I met with with city manager Leonardis and had some conversations with city our city clerk, who's responsible for the city picnic, and I said hey, it would be good to have a theme this year that's building community in Monte Serino so that we get more people from the public involved. And, and when I've gone out and I've met with different official elected officials, they're kind of like, where's Monte Serino? What's a Monte Serino? And I'd like to invite people like um, our representative, uh, Anna Eshoo, uh Senator Josh Becker, um, Senator, or sorry, um, uh, Dave Cortese, uh, Assembly Member Pellerin, Assembly Member Evan Lolo, and, and just I'd, I'd, I would like to be able to sign a letter on behalf of city council so that they come to our picnic or at least they're invited there. And so, so that they say when they're sitting and they're looking at potential legislation, they think, you know what? How does this affect the people in Monte Serino? And they think about that. And so that we, as the residents of Monte Serino, our residents, they're their voices considered a little more outside of the city of Monte Serino. That's essentially what I'd, I'd like to do. And and this is not authorizing Brian McInchuck. No one cares who I am, but they care who the mayor is. So next year, 
you know, this would be allowing if our if our mayor Wolsheimer could then do the same thing. It's just increasing the the awareness of Monte Serino. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think it would be helpful to do that. Uh, and just go up, up the list on who represents Monte Serino. So that's uh, assembly members here, tell uh, supervisor Joe Smith in. On this one is an issue. Uh, maybe that's what this president Biden too, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sen Senator Feinstein, I guess. I'm, but I don't know if you want to go that far, but put the demo in there. But I think that'd be great to get invited and do it in enough time because they always have an excuse that they're busy or whatever else. But we'd like to get them. Other questions, comments? It might you probably thought about this already, but it might also make sense to uh, try to get some press coverage from various newspapers, local or statewide. Okay, uh, and also a good speaker system, you know, a stage, a stage <laughs> or something where they want to speak for a couple of minutes, they're able to do that rather than shouting on the boulevard. This is fun, but <laughs> and we got that covered. <laughs> okay, great. I just want to also say I agree wholeheartedly that this is a great idea. And um, don't forget Larry Stone. He's always fun to bring to a party. It's fun to listen to him. He's the most hated person in some of the county. Maybe he loves it. Maybe he gets a high percentage. Also, <laughs> the, the, the more senior representative to the West Valley you know, Michigan uh, Board of Trustees, I think, uh, is that uh, former mayor? Jack Lucas. Yeah. You can be probably right. <laughs> so I believe he's a resident of Monte Serino, so he would be invited anyways. Right. But this would be a more official invitation. Oh, okay. Because you're sending up formal yeah. with the seal of the board. Or it's our quail. Yeah. Um, so it sounds to me like we've got agreement on this, but I would like to open it for public comment. If you're appearing remotely, please raise your virtual hand if you'd like to make a comment on this. Close public comment and bring it back. Uh, this is for City Attorney Powell. Do we need what do we need to authorize uh, the mayor to sign these letters? Just a motion. Just a motion. I would be looking for a motion then. So moved. Like a second. I don't remember. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 401. With that, I believe. Uh, oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I have one comment. I think I brought this up before, but we absolutely need a better sound system than last year. Yeah. Last year we had this full horn that did not work. People couldn't hear what we were saying. So we, I don't know who should be responsible for it. I think you mentioned you might have access to some equipment. Yes. But we absolutely need that, especially if you have. Um, yeah. So, so are, are, are you saying that you want to, well, it's not an agenda item, so we can't make any directions, but I, I think, with I think the point is made. Uh, with that, I would like to, any other comments? No. no. If that is the case, I will adjourn the special meeting of uh, Tuesday, July 18th, 2023 at 4.18 p.m.